John Skinner is the proprietor of Hater Rock State Winery. After being a stock worker for 25 years, during which time he became an avid wine enthusiast. In 2004, he purchased the land in South Penticton known locally as the Black Hawk. Hater Rock State Winery is currently producing ultra premium wines to reflect the perfect marriage of New World fruit and Old World processes for sale in Canada, as well as the exports to China and the UK. Please welcome John Skinner. I'm really, really happy to have the opportunity. Uh, Painted Rock is, it's a vision that I had um, born sort of in the late 90s, I'd say probably around 90, 97 when the, when the uh, BC wine industry really started to prove itself. I was a wine collector, I was a stockbroker, I was sick of the business. The, the, the brokerage business is a wonderful means to an end, but it, it really, it, it, was, it was a great place for me to be, um, to accumulate what's necessary to get into the wine industry because now I've been at it for, uh, I started it, I've been at it for nine years now and it's a, it's a hefty chore to get a, to start a vineyard winery from scratch. What I ended up doing was, I thought in about 2000, I thought I'm going to go up to the Okanagan and I'm going to find a winery that's for sale and and just transition out of the brokerage business and into this glorious new life and and uh, uh, make wine and have somebody sell it for me. And Can I laugh out loud now? Oh please, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, it's so funny because I'm now I'm, the, the name's already been taken with another winery, but I am the laughing stock of my folks because <laughs> honestly, honestly, I've never worked so hard. It is. The, the, and that's, that gets back to the idea that I'm really happy to be in front of the, the foodie community because I've never, I never realized the connectivity between trying to make really good wine, trying to get it in front of people who really appreciate it, understand it, and the correlation between that and cuisine. And you know, having been a wine guy, I just, I just, I was mentioning to the chef earlier. I, I said, now the pairings are these are like. Um, when, when I do a wine dinner, it's like somebody's pairing uh, food with my children. Like these are, these are, like if you understand the journey, it's been, it's been so long, it's been so humbling to get from where we started, which was, I, I alluded earlier to, to the idea of buying a winery. Um, what I did was I hired a group of consultants and, and I looked at everything that was for sale over a period of about three years. I kept on thinking, I'm gonna find our, our, you know, it, it had to be first and foremost a vineyard that was worthy of a very, very aggressive mandate because if it wasn't going to be, um, I thought the Okanagan was making good wines, I thought there was a lot of room for improvement and it needed capital and expertise and I thought, okay, if I can find this diamond in the rough, I'm going to go there. Um, fast forward X number of years and the number of wineries that I looked at, everything had, for lack of a better description, hair on it. It had some reason not to do the deal. The vineyards weren't right, the winery was, was wrong. There was some reason I didn't want to get involved with it. Until one day, I found this property called the Black Hawk. And this is like a religious experience because I, I, I then was very, very experienced in what you're looking for in a vineyard. Um, the BC government had done a study of all the microclimates in, in the Okanagan region. And they'd rated them on all the various criteria for producing premium wine grapes. And, and so I started to know all these specific sites. And, and when I went through this enormous book, it's about six feet across, page after page, the attributes would be defined by a color. So, so if it was the best, if it rated the best, it would be green. If it was little worse, it would be yellow, or, you know, whatever, down a varying scale. It wasn't until I found this one property on Skaha Lake and, and it just stuck out like a bit of a thumb on Skaha Lake and I turned page after page and after page and that one dot was green and I thought so, so therein lies the opportunity. I bought a property that had been fallowed for 17 years. It was a raw prospect. It was in terms of the opportunity it was a, a blank landscape in term or uh, canvas. In terms of the commitment, it was just <laughs> staggeringly more complicated because now what I had to do is in the next year, I was starting from scratch. So now I had to put together the team, source the clones, source the varieties, um, do a planning strategy, understand what's going on in the Okanagan. So the first thing I did was I hosted a big dinner for all the wineries that I thought that really attracted me into the industry. I, I had 
second tenant from from Black Hills there, I had, I had these people were so generous. Um, Poplar Grove, Ian from Poplar Grove, and, and these guys, and I asked them what's working, what isn't working, and to a person they're all incredibly generous. Um, you can plant a variety, but you have to know which clone works, because certain clones are certain rootstocks that you don't and do, and there was a lot of magic in the lessons learned in the 90s when most of these, you know, the guys that were raising the bar, they, they really started to take it seriously in the 90s when after the government had implemented this Vinifera program. So I planted in 05, I prepared the site for a year, put together the team, planted in 05, 06, 07 was our first harvest, 08, 09 was our first release. So. Um, the leap of faith was staggering because I, I had no idea that I was going to have up to 20 employees for six years before we got a penny back. Um, it's, it's uh, um, remember that thing about accumulating kind of wealth as a broker? Well, hello, six years later, you're looking at my wife saying, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Like it, was, it was really, really a leap of faith. But So now we're, our third vintage is in the market, um, and I am in and around the foodie community all the time, and I have such an incredible appreciation for it. I found um, when I when when we came in, our specific model is we have a 60-acre bench. We've planted 25 acres. The business plan, and that's one thing I get back to that I do have experience in, and that's designing a business plan with focus. And the idea was to aim at the ultra premium model. That's 5,000 cases, never bigger. I don't want to. I don't want to get bigger. I want to get better, and that is bringing in. Expertise, I've got a consultant that comes in from Bordeaux, Alain Sutra comes six times a year, and he educates my staff, he, is, he does our blending, he is absolutely, probably, to my mind, the best <coughs> find on the planet Earth, and you know the greatest irony is, he found us. I, when I finally, in that first year, when I, um, when I f finally decided on which clones and varieties, I, uh, I, I couldn't get them. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I have this agent, and he's, he's sending out, uh, he's, he's communicating back and forth with these nurseries in Bordeaux, and he said, he said, okay, we want clone 99 and 100 of Syrah, we want this, this, this. And they're coming back and they're saying, sure, we'll give you 89 and 90, it's almost as good. And we got that religiously across the board. It was happening time and time again. And, and I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this once, wouldn't you like just to plant one vineyard and plant the entire thing wrong? Like I thought these guys are just, I'm the rookie on the block, they're going to they're gonna lay me out with, the, with these stupid clones. So what I did was I contacted the nursery directly and I said, I said, I think it's just a matter of money. And um, so I paid them more and I got everything that I wanted. And, and like, oh, I love Americans, but I was kind of like the ugly American because I, I just bullied my way into this thing and I didn't even know it. I thought really he was just holding out for more dough. So what I what I did was uh, so fast forward to the next year when we're planting, and we just planted, and a gentleman marches across the vineyard, which at the time was just like mud and dust, and it was horrific. And and he sticks his hand out and he says he said um, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm I'm Alain Sutra from Bordeaux, and and he said and I, I said yeah. He said he said I love what you've planted here. Nobody in the Okanagan knows how to blend these clones. And, and yeah, I, I, I listened to him for a while. And, and his, his next comment, I'd never forget this, because he, he, he said, and, and forgive the accent, but I just got to do it. He said, he said you ruffled some feathers in Baldo last year. And, and I, 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 I said, sorry. And then he explained that there's a hierarchy, there's a pecking order to getting those clones. And you have to be a certain, you, whatever, however you rank in their system, so that the first growths get access to 99 and 100 before the, the second growths, before the third, before the fourth. So you have to be, um, you have to wait your turn. And I just didn't wait our turn. Anyway, I'm in Canada, so, so uh, I hope they forgive us now. But anyway, so we planted what we needed to plant. And, and Alain is incredibly involved in our journey now. And our journey, very simply, is damn the torpedoes. We want to make wine not to compete against our neighbors, but to compete on a world stage. And we're getting there. We just, uh, did to do some unsolicited chest pounding, we just, we just got a silver medal at Serratamond, which is, that's, that's not one of, 
uh, it's not a competition that's gratuitous, but giving out a whole lot of silvers and golds and all this kind of stuff. That's really serious, and that gives context. What we're trying to do now is find out we're really happy with where we are regionally, we're really happy with where we are nationally. Um, but internationally, now I want to see how are we on the, on the scale. So our, our Syrah just got a silver and at the Decanter Awards, our Red Icon blend just got a silver. So that shows, and when you go down the list and you see Painted Rock, and after P, there's L, and that's, no, it's after P, there's, there, there was P Chalange Field. Like, that's really serious stuff. And it'd be in the same, even mentioned in the same graph on the same page in, at Decanter. Oh, bravo. Yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, that is um, really uh, shows that we're on track, and you always need, a, the, the industry has a lot of these kind of things, but I, I pay great attention to them as a barometer because I'm, I'm just in this in a vacuum and I keep thinking, how are we doing? And, and uh, you know, we're selling to these restaurants, we're doing these kind of things, but you need some, that's why it's people going to see ratings and numbers and some people are really offended by that. I need to have some sense of, of comparison and I, you know, I read those things too. But So now we're in our third, We've actually got our fifth vintage in the winery. We're we're hitting our marks. I don't know if I'm over hitting my marks. How are we doing? You got two minutes. So so anyway, just to just to kind of give some some context in that regard, in our first vintage to validate it, we won two left tenant governor awards, and it was the most. It was the first time it had ever happened that somebody in the first vintage won two. There's eleven in the industry, and that's like the big deal in in BC and the industry are those awards. Um, it's for the it's per varietal and it's it's the lieutenant governor awards of, of excellence. Um, so Stephen Point, who is probably the most eloquent, January he's, he's our lieutenant governor. This guy is a spectacular speaker and, and what a what a magical representative for British Columbia. It's like he's a really a great guy. Stood up and he and he tells these funny stories at our winery as he's as he's giving us these these awards, and then he said, and, and it's it's wonderful for me to be here because Painted Rock not only won one, but they won two Lieutenant Governor Awards, and I don't think that'll ever happen again, and he can hear, we've got this on videotape, and he can hear in the crowd, we'll see about that. Well, um, last week we won two again. So Stephen Point is, is going to be coming, it's his last year, he's, he's actually moving out of the Lieutenant Governor's home now. But um, he's going to make the presentation on July July twenty sixth, and I'm trying to find a video screen with this thing with the audio because it's just so. Anyway, he, it's uh, it, to me it just means that we're we're on um, we're hitting the marks and we're you know getting in front of the people that uh, understand what our what our vision is, and that's you know at the end of the day it's a legacy family business. We don't make compromises and. You know, we're just trying to participate in an exciting young industry and make our contribution to it. So that's kind of the Painted Rock story, and uh, hope you enjoyed the Syrah. That's that's one of the two wines that just won the Lieutenant Governor Award. The other's called our Red Icon Blend, and that's our primary focus is the blend. But uh, um, so, cheers. Thank you.